last seen northbound near the uh, lake. I'm not sure which one it is, just north of Abstin Road. Running from the police isn't an uncommon offense, especially amongst people who have warrants or who get caught breaking the law. In that case, backup is usually called and the squad of officers either hunts the car down or traps it, standard procedure. But what do the police do when the car they're chasing can't be caught? That's an issue that the officers of Flint, Michigan are about to face right now when they come up against a Dodge Challenger Hellcat going 150 miles per hour, resulting in an intense police chase. On August 17, 2022, an officer of the Grand Blanc Township Police Department was patrolling his corner of Flint, Michigan, when he witnessed a highly dangerous situation taking place. In the dark of night, two vehicles were speeding down Interstate 475 at over 100 miles per hour. From the way the two cars were accelerating, it seems like they were allegedly racing. The officer turned on his lights and siren and attempted to apprehend and stop the vehicles. One of the cars, a Dodge Challenger Hellcat, surely knew he could easily outrun the officer. So he did just that. Seeing the approaching police vehicle, the driver took off at astonishing speed. Once the police cruiser was out of sight, the driver thought he and his car had accomplished an easy getaway. The Hellcat continued to cruise the streets, not knowing that the officer wasn't his main concern. His biggest problem was actually up in the air above him. The uh, Challenger took off on me, going at least uh, 130 right now. He's coming under Bristol Road. It quickly became apparent that the Hellcat wouldn't be caught on the ground, so the Grand Blanc Township Police Department made a snap decision. They solicited the help of the Michigan State Police, who dispatched a police helicopter just seconds after receiving the call. I, I lost it. Last seen northbound near the uh, lake. I'm not sure which one it is, just north of Abstin Road. We got him coming through the curves. It's dark color, that's all I can tell you. The reason the Hellcat appears white in this footage is because the pilot is using a forward-looking infrared, or FLIR, camera to track the car. For those who don't know, an infrared camera detects the heat that a person or object gives off. The Hellcat has been consistently traveling at a high speed, from the racing to being chased. As a result, the car's wheels have become very hot, hence why it's glowing whiter than the cars around it. This is a lucky break for the officers since this makes their target stick out like a sore thumb. Did up uh, a little bit, swerved around some vehicles, still driving extremely recklessly while not, uh, nobody should be in his trunk. You can't either, no way you can see the uh, Grand Blank car. According to the speedometer in the upper right-hand corner of the monitor, the helicopter had to reach a speed of almost 150 miles per hour to keep up with the performance car as it sped down the highway. If an unobstructed flying craft had to fly that fast to keep pace, one can imagine how fast the Hellcat must have been going on the ground. Chavez now and then up to Robert T. They are exiting at Robert T. And it looks like it's gonna be an orange, burnt orange Challenger with a, maybe a white racing stripe or something similar. It's gonna be westbound on Robert T. And that's my bad on the color, it's actually gonna be gray. Uh, it's a gray Charger black racing stripes, completely wrong. Uh, Boulevard now still westbound, normal speeds but 40. Through James Beagle, still westbound, normal speeds. Slowing up here at Garland, making a southbound turn into the parking lot. Okay, make a left, make a left. And turn, when you get into the parking lot, you're going to be nose to nose with you. Another car comes in off the hill, you get pocket in. At its fastest point, the police cruiser was recorded going 71 miles per hour after the Hellcat. Even at that considerably high rate of speed, the Challenger was still going at least twice as fast as it sped out of sight. Three hours of traffic. Uh, pretty light. Let's get a positive fire. Uh, slowing down considerably. 
Yeah, lost a tire at Bradley, southbound uh, Bradley. If we get some people in the area, he's just... Happy southbound Bradley, lost a tire. Judging by the homes and narrow streets, it appears that the challenger has entered a suburb. He might be cutting through, or he might be attempting to flee by hiding in or around the houses. If he plans to do the latter, then that presents an entirely new set of problems for police. Lincoln right now, northbound. It's going to be coming back up towards M21 here in a second. It's just south M21. He's blacked out. Uh, pulling into an address right now on Lincoln. The numbers are going to be Lincoln Drive. Driver's door is open. Lincoln, that's Lincoln in Chicago. Driver's at the truck. Walked into an address next door, which I think is at Lincoln. Yeah, there's a pickup truck in the driveway and an SUV darked out the further out. He's up in the in the house. And check that, not up in the house. He's uh, walking around to the backyard, just trying to avoid us underneath some trees. Uh, we can get cars in the area. We can get a perimeter. It's unclear why the suspect didn't enter the house. He pulled into the driveway and took his time getting out and walking away, as if he were somewhat comfortable being there. However, notice that his female passenger doesn't get out of the car. This could be his residence, or this could be the home of a complete stranger. The driver is basically straight off that first patrol car and behind the house. I have lost him for the time being underneath some trees. If we get a perimeter, Brabin, Lincoln, and Cummings, please, that would work great. Okay, on scene, if you could sit tight, pull the perimeter, we got a dog around. The purpose of a perimeter is to close the perpetrator in on all sides by blocking off all primary avenues of travel in the immediate area. If a potential escape route is left unpatrolled, the suspect can run off unseen. A perimeter can be especially important when a canine is brought to the scene, as some people have a genuine fear of dogs and are more likely to get scared and flee. Troop 3, where's the dog at? I might have him behind uh, one else to the north of where the vehicle is. Hard to tell though right now. I just need somebody or the canine to go check it. The 45-minute manhunt came to an end shortly after, and with no casualties or injuries sustained. The suspect was brought out of his admittedly poor hiding place and arrested without further issue. The driver's name was never given, only that he was 23 years of age. The name and age of the passenger of the Hellcat were never disclosed. The car was taken away to the impound yard and the driver was taken to Genesee County Jail where he would be charged with fleeing and eluding police, both of which were felony offenses. It's unclear if the driver was actually convicted of any crime.